No all-time great in NBA history receives less attention than the number 19 member of my 25 greatest players in NBA history list, Bob Pettit. Bob Pettit was born December 12, 1932 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The son of a sheriff, Pettit loved basketball almost immediately. Sadly, his height had different plans and kept him from making the high school basketball team as a sophomore. His father, though, didn't accept this outcome and pushed Bob to improve his game through practice in the family's backyard and games in the local church league. One year and five inches of growth later, Pettit made the Baton Rouge high school team and never looked back. By his senior season, he was an all-city star and led the school to its first state title in over 20 years. From there, he decided to keep his towns close to home and attend Louisiana State University. At LSU, Pettit would have one of the great college careers in the sport's history. After not being allowed to play as a freshman due to NCAA rules, Pettit would lead the SEC in scoring all three seasons and was a two-time All-American and as a junior, led the Tigers to their first Final Four in school history. By the end of his senior season that saw him average 30 points per game, and now 6'9 Pettit was ready for the NBA. That is, that's how it seemed to the outside world, but Milwaukee Hawks coach Red Holzman saw it differently. He questioned Pettit's ability to withstand the strong big men of the time despite the team selecting Pettit second overall in the 54 draft, and worried about it. Holzman decided it would be best to move Pettit to the forward position, a decision that would go on to change the NBA forever. Pettit's game at 6'9 proved perfectly suited for the forward position, and as a rookie, Pettit would make the first of 10 straight first-team All-NBAs. By his second season, Pettit was the best player in the league, and won its first Most Valuable Player award following the 56th season. In just his third season, Pettit would lead the now-relocated St. Louis Hawks to the franchise's first finals appearance before a loss to a rookie Bill Russell Celtics. The next season, the Hawks' luck would be different, though, as early in the series Russell rolled his ankle and was never fully healthy again. Now down to just seven healthy future Hall of Famers, the Celtics were beatable and Pettit did just that. In the closing game six, Pettit would score 50 points, including 19 of the final 21 for the Hawks. It was a remarkable performance that handed the Russell Celtics their only finals loss over the duration of their 11 titles and 13 season dynasty. Pettit would lead the Hawks to two other finals appearances, the last two in the franchise's history, but couldn't overcome the Celtics again. By the time he retired in 1965, Pettit was a two-time MVP, the first man to reach 20,000 points, and a four-time All-Star MVP, a record he still shares today with Kobe Bryant. Pettit would walk away at just 32 years old thanks to having a job lined up at a bank back home in Baton Rouge, and not wanting to risk losing it. It was a different era. If there's one thing you should know and remember about Bob Pettit, is in many ways he created the modern power forward position. His game was built on three things, a relentless ability to get to the rim, being unstoppable on the offensive glass, and a consistent craftiness that led him to live at the free throw line. Players like Carl Malone owe a debt of gratitude for their games thanks to how Pettit dominated the NBA in the 1950s and 60s. Bob Pettit should be remembered as an unstoppable competitor who refused to accept no for an answer. He found a way to thrive time and again when people doubted him. For a man who was never believed in and whose game was never one that blew people away, multiple MVP awards, and a championship that broke up Russell's Celtics run will have to do. So is the legacy of Bob Pettit, the greatest player to slip past the main pages of NBA history books. <laughs>